Hello everyone. Today um, I decided we briefly talked about this investigation, the, Sao, the hysterosalpingogram. Uh, the reasons are very simple. 30% uh, of the patients we see in the um, gyne clinics um, are infertility patients. 30% uh, of those have um, tubal damage and this is an investigation that we have to do on the ward very frequently and it's it's an investigation that um is always there in our uh, uh, exams so it would be nice to go through it and um get our knowledge uh, uh improved uh, so let's get on with it okay so a hysterosalpingograph is um it's kind of an x-ray uh, uh that we use uh, to have a look at the uterus and have a look at uh, the fallopian tubes. Um, that is not exactly accurate, actually, what I've just said. Um, what you're actually looking at is the endometrial cavity uh, of the uterus and not actually the uterus itself. And you're looking at the, the inside of the tubes and not the outside of the tubes. That is uh, important to uh, to realize. You are also looking at uh, the length of the tubes, um, the curvature of the tubes, uh, the contour of the tubes, uh, the contour of the endometrium. All this uh, comes out in an HSG as we commonly call it. So how do we prepare for, for this procedure? Yeah, so we know this procedure is normally done in the radiology department on the same beds that um, they use for other x-rays. Uh, so uh, you need all your instruments. I think that um, a D and C set is, um, is probably an ideal set to carry for this procedure because you have your sound there, you have your... Um, you have your dilators in case you need to do a bit of dilatation and you need to have this um, uh, tenaculum there, your metal cannula, the cannula that you are going to uh, screw in the cervix to administer the dye. You need to make sure there's a good lighting system. You need to make sure that the patient has emptied uh, their bladder and it's important that um, you put or we put a consideration for antibiotics. Uh, PID is very common and uh, doing uh, an HSG would flare up uh, latent uh, uh, PID. So it's, it's important to consider uh, antibiotics in, in this patient. So a five-day course would be, uh, would be something that, uh, that can be used. Um, an antispasmodic is important because it will reduce a pain during the procedure and it will also reduce um, the uh, anti will reduce the spasms uh, in the uterus so when uh, dye is injected in the uterus it causes um, spasms of the uterine muscles so giving an anti spasmodic helps to reduce this which reduces the pain but also reduces the risk of having a false positive because the spasms can block the the tubes and when you insert your your dye into the uterine cavity the dye fails to pass because there's so much spasms and that can lead to a uh, to a um, uh, wrong interpretation the other thing that um, we need to consider is a painkiller a and analgesia is important, but things like brufen, diclofenac really only work maybe after the procedure is done and not uh, not during. An emergency tray is important um, because there's a risk of allergy. Uh, the contrast that we use has some iodine in it, and some patients would react, have an allergic reaction to iodine. So it's important that uh, we have an emergency tray with uh, adrenaline, and um, and some hydrocortisone uh, usually a cannula and all those things that we need on an emergency tray. Um, I mentioned a grav index last for a reason uh, because this is a patient with infertility. 
and it's very unlikely that they would be pregnant. Uh, but uh, that being said, it's important to realize that you don't want to be the one who disrupts a pregnancy in a in a patient trying to be pregnant. So that's why this procedure would normally be done in the um, period uh, like five to the five to the ten of the menstrual cycle to avoid uh, this uh, from happening. Um, but if in any doubt, uh, it doesn't hurt uh, for us to do a grab index. So how is this uh, procedure done? Uh, so the patient is um, usually after explaining uh, how the procedure is going to go, how there might be some discomfort uh, to the patient. This should be properly explained. Um, the patient is put in uh, lithotomy. Um, we put a cask or speculum um, in the vagina and then um, um, we, clean, we clean the cervix uh, and then uh, screw the uh, HSG cannula in, into the cervix. Uh, the HSG cannula is small, is pointed at the end so that it goes into the cervix easily. Uh, sometimes you might need a little bit of dilating for it to uh, to go in. Um, so once it goes in, it's big at the bottom because it wants it's uh, for the purpose of sealing uh, so that the dye doesn't um, uh, uh, spill out after it has been injected in the in the uterus. So um, what normally happens is that we first have a control. We take an X-ray without um, any any dye. After we take an X-ray, then we have to uh, make sure that uh, we remove air bubbles from the HSG cannula by injecting some. Uh, contrast into it uh, beforehand just to remove the air bubbles because once air bubbles go into the uterine cavity they will look like defects and then um, it will be difficult to interpret uh, what we see so we have to see uh, we have to do that uh, beforehand so anyway so once the cannula is screwed in we have to inject um, the dye into it so we have a control ready then we inject like uh, five mils uh, three to five mils of dye. That first one is to make sure that um, the uterine cavity is um, is uh, well defined. Um, once that X-ray is taken, we inject in more dye. Now we want uh, with a second injection, maybe five another five mils to be able to look at the fallopian tubes. So we inject that dye, then we appreciate the fallopian tubes, then we put a last three or so mules to get the dye to get out of the tubes and uh, for us to see the spill. So that's normally how that is done. So we we'll normally have like um, maybe about four pictures to look at. A control, one that looks at the intrauterine cavity, another one that looks at the tubes, and the last one uh, that uh, looks at the um, at the spill into the peritoneal cavity of this of this dye that we've injected. So why why would we do an HSG? Uh, so we do an SH, HSG to look at tubal patency, and that is quite important to understand. We are not looking at tubal function; we are looking at tubal patency. Are the tubes open? That's all that. Um, the the HSG is telling us uh, sometimes there might be microcilia damage in the tubes and the tube is not able to carry the egg um, uh, normally but because the tube is patent the HSG will show a patent tube so the important point there is to realize that patent tube does not mean um, a functional tube uh, then the HSG also uh, would tell us about um, the structure of the endometrial cavity. So, and maybe sometimes the structure of the endometrial cavity will give us an idea of uh, what is in the outside of the uterus. So, things like um, polyps, 
will probably show as defects um, in the in the uterus uh, things like fibroids would show like uh, indentations in the contour of the of the uterine cavity and also things like uh, accepted uterus by uterus all this can be observed on a, on an SS, hsg the other thing an hsg uh, is used for is um uh, sometimes a patient comes with a tubal ligation and they were they've become pregnant and um, they want to see what has gone on you could use an hsg uh, for that to see if the tubes were really are really closed on both sides um in medical legal uh, situations as well where somebody sues uh, the doctor or the hospital that how did they become pregnant uh, was a procedure actually done by the officer in charge so that's um, another time we can do an hsg to show that the the tubes were actually closed or they were actually tied so generally that's what uh, we normally use an hsg for so what are the contraindications uh, for this procedure so the first contraindication uh, there is uh, pregnancy uh, you need to make sure the patient is not pregnant uh, because you don't want to be the one that disrupts a pregnancy in a patient who's um, uh, trying to be pregnant this is the reason the investigation is done between the 5 and 10 um, so that this is avoided the additional advantage for doing this uh, procedure at that time is that the endometrial uh, lining is thin and this will help in interpretation of the images Active pelvic infection is um, is another contraindication because this infection can be spread into the peritoneal cavity once the um, uh, dye spills into the peritoneal cavity. It can also flare up a latent um, latent infection. Uh, menstruation is another contraindication. The reason is that there are clots in the uterus, um, and therefore, once we push the dye into the endometrial uh, cavity, uh, those clots might uh, go and block uh, the tubes and therefore give us wrong interpretation. The um, clots in the uterus might also uh, disturb the contour of the endometrial lining which might also end up giving us some wrong interpretation. So the complications of this procedure include infection if we use um, uh, instruments that are not well uh, sterilized um, uh, we can also uh, spread infection to the peritoneal cavity if somebody had a latent um, a pelvic inflammatory disease the procedure can cause spotting after it is done it's very rare that you have uh, excessive bleeding but the patient will experience some spotting after after the procedure is done uh, cervical injuries because we are trying to screw them uh, cannula into the cervix we can end up with cervical injuries it's possible to have uterine perforation um, radiation exposure to the patient is a concern but it's very rare that uh, we have um, any um, effects from radiation exposure because the, ex uh, the exposure is really uh, minimal um, when you are using an oil based contrast, the contrast can go into the peritoneal cavity and cause granulomas in the peritoneal cavity. Then um, there is also the risk of iodine um, uh, allergy or anaphylaxis can happen and this is why we have that emergency tray um, on the side when we are doing this uh, procedure. Um, this is not a complication uh, but um, it has been observed that once HSG is done, especially in patients with uh, unexplained infertility, it's found that uh, some of them uh, become pregnant uh, after the procedure. This is because there's um, sometimes some debris or micro debris in the um, tubal lining and once an HSG is done, those micro debris are flushed out and some patients end up uh, becoming pregnant after the procedure. So if HSG shows that um, uh, the tubes are blocked, uh, what are we supposed to do? Uh, so I think it depends on the kind of damage that we see on the on the x-ray but it's important to remember that um, 
the sensitivity of HSG is very low. Um, HSG is very uh, poor at detecting uh, tumor blockage. So when HSG says tubes are blocked, it's only right about between 50 to 60% of the time. But HSG, on the other hand, is very good at telling us that the tubes are patent. If HSG says the tubes are open, then 80 to 90% of the time, that is um, that is true. So we need to, to remember that. So when it says tubes are blocked and we are not convinced, it's, it's uh, worth considering uh, repeating the test. Um, the other thing that we can do... Um, is that we can ask a patient for to go for a laparoscopy where uh, a scope can be put in the abdomen and the tubes visualized from there. Um, a dye can be put in the um, uterine cavity and it will be seen uh, physically by this camera in the abdomen, uh, seeing the dye coming out of the other side of the tubes. And this would be um, kind of a better test than... than um, HSG, but we know in our setup that most patients cannot afford uh, laparoscopy or in many places it's not available. So in, when in doubt, um, it's it's worth repeating the test. Then there's this um, uh, thing about surgery. So uh, there's tubal damage. Uh, can we go for surgery? I think we have to be realistic and see that um, the success with surgery in the way uh, we do it um, might not be very good. You need to have uh, good expertise for this procedure. Somebody who's been doing it uh, for a while and they've seen some success with it, um, then we can refer those patients for surgery. But um, in many setups, you find that um, sometimes... Uh, doing an IVF um, can be cheaper than trying to do surgery and then when it fails then you go for uh, for IVF you end up with a patient spending a lot of money from uh, surgery to surgery before they try IVF it's important to remember that when you have hydro uh, salping severe tubal damage um, and you are you find it uh, during a laparotomy um, a surgery can be done to, to remove the tubes, especially if a patient is going for, uh, for IVF because it's been seen that um, damaged tubes um, really affect the success of, um, of IVF, uh, probably due to some uh, secretions uh, from the damaged tubes that impair um, uh, implantation or whatever the explanation is uh, for that. So that was all on the HSG. Uh, thank you so much for listening and we'll see you in the next video.